Anybody here this morning who's ever sung in an elementary school choir, hmm? middle school, junior high, college, uh, in church, and you want to come down and join me, I have a riser you can come and stand on, or you can come and stand beside me. But we're going to start off with number 219. It's called Surely the Presence of the Lord is in this place. Let's all stand together.
turn back just a few pages. I think it's 536. Let me make sure. Does it look like that? Ah, uh, now you might, I don't know if you know this song, but I do, and I love it. Have faith in God, let's sing the first and the last, number 536. Until that day when the kingdom of God comes. And Jesus took the bread, gave thanks, and broke it. And gave it to his disciples saying, This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Amen. represents the body of Christ. Remember him as we eat together. This drink represents the blood that Jesus shed for the sins of the world. Remember him as we drink together. Before we take up our offering, I'd like to read once again from the book of Luke. From Luke chapter 12, verses 32 through 34. And these are the words of Jesus. Jesus said, Do not be afraid, little flock, for your Father has been pleased to give you the kingdom. Sell your possessions and give to the poor. Provide purses for yourselves that will not wear out, a treasure in heaven that will not be exhausted, where no thief comes near and no moth destroys. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Amen.
reading from Proverbs chapter 21, verse 1 through 3. The king's heart is in the hand of the Lord. He directs it like water course whenever he pleases. All a man's ways seem right to him, but the Lord weighs the heart. To do what is right and just is more acceptable to the Lord than sacrifice. Do we have any uh, prayer requests for today? My Aunt Joyce is cancer, cancer treatments. That's Joyce? Yeah. John? Uh, everybody loses their dogs, and we all feel bad at it. My daughter uh, lost a uh, beloved dog. It kind of struck us harder than we've ever seen before. His name is Bruce. He was a uh, great mastiff. Only had him four years. He was in a real special place. He's a great big old thing, but he's just the most lovable dog and lived a short life. And Probably gave out and we had to put him down. It was a oh, wow. real killer for her and all of us. So I just appreciate you okay. thinking about her. Craig? Um, when she was getting ready to turn 94 next month, uh, was hospitalized a couple of days this past week. And just she was in a lot of pain. Just uh, just ask prayers for her recovery. What's her name? Thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> Anybody else? Wanda? <clears throat> Continue to play, to pray for Krista and um, and the surgeons as they do surgery on October 23rd. Okay. So. I've uh, got a uh, property manager going through breast cancer, Kim Horn, and uh, also uh, uh, a gal in Florida. Is that storm damage correct? Yeah. yeah wiped, wiped everything out. She, was, she had to ride through it. Wow. Anybody else? Diane? Uh, well, I have a, a praise more than anything because uh, my son uh, and his wife um, had to go through that storm. And uh, thankfully, they had no house damage. They were safe. Wow. And uh, just some minor stuff that can't be cleaned up. So that's a good praise for them. Okay. Mark and Summer. I, I just wanted, my sister lives in western North Carolina. They're fine, but I, they're devastated down there. We need to just pray for all the people in western North Carolina that they can't even get out. Help can't get into them right now. So. Anybody else? Okay, let's bow our heads. Father, we come to you today to ask for prayers for Aunt Joyce and her cancer, for uh, John Fox's daughter, dog, who they had to put down, so, uh, for Espy, please be with her as uh, she went into the hospital. Be with Krista and the surgeons as she prepares for uh, surgery. Be with Kim and her cancer treatment. Be with uh, Kelly for the uh, storm damage in Tampa. Be with all those people that uh, have been affected by the hurricane that has gone through the south. Um, we, we do want to offer praise for Mark and Summer not having any issues. Uh, but again, we do want to reach out for those uh, people that have been displaced due to the storms. Uh, we also ask for uh, military, veterans, police, fire, and medical, hungry and hurting, and the homeless, and any silent requests that you may have. In your son's name we pray. Amen.
Thank you, Ted. Thank you, John, for playing today. It seems awful quiet in here, doesn't it? You know, just that little uh, cricket that's in the fan out there. That's, that's, uh, that little bugger gets in there every Sunday. I don't, I don't know how he or she does that, but just gets up there and just goes right along with that fan. Well, we'll let that be the joke of the day, because there's no joke of the day in your bulletin. I'll get back to that one of these days, but, uh, you know, Mike, I always used to have a joke of the day and quotes and things like that in here, but I thought I'd change it up from time to time, so maybe it's time to go back to having the joke of the day, but those jokes were so bad, they, I don't think they want me to go back to those jokes of the day. But there's a little uh, story in there for you, the, the blessing of gratitude and, and saying thank you to people, just something as simple as that what that can do for someone, and also what it does for you when you say, thank you, or I appreciate that. And then there is a little uh, cartoon there for you, uh, relative to uh, Ziggy and his dog Fuzz, and you can read that, or take a look at that at your leisure. Now you know there's some things that I, I never talk about in church, and we mention that from time to time, I never talk about politics. You guys know that. We don't talk about money, we don't talk about sports, and we don't talk about religion. Those four <laughs> things. But I'm going to make an exception to that. We're going to talk about sports. Somebody wanted me to give a sports report, so I'll give a very brief sports report that if you are a Kentucky Wildcat fan, your dream came true yesterday, and they beat the uh, Ole Miss Rebels in Oxford. So uh, a lot of good football games, but uh, if you're a Kentucky fan, and I I think that's a Kentucky, I'm not sure if that's a Kentucky shirt that uh, Tyler has on or not. Yes, sir. Because I have my reading glasses on, so I can't see much of anything else out there. You're all just kind of a blur. But, <laughs> but, for, uh, but for that hundred or so of you that are here today, uh, <laughs> see that, baby, that's a little joke. Uh, we're, we'll uh, say, uh, however many are here, thank you for being here. We don't care if there's... Uh, well, we'd love to have the place full. We'd all like that, wouldn't we? We'd enjoy having the place full. But it doesn't matter if there's 20 people here or 120 people here. We're here to, to praise and, and glorify the Lord. That's why we're here. We're not to bring come here to bring attention upon ourselves. Uh, and sometimes I feel like I do that when I'm you know, giving a sports report or things. But it's not about any individual here. It's about the collective, isn't it? It's about all of us. But we're here to worship and and also have a good time. You're among friends. You're among family. So, so smile and have a good time today. And I, saw, I know some of you are thinking, boy, it's a, it's a shame we couldn't have a, maybe just a little rain today. We need that uh, for the crops. <laughs> but instead of that, let me ask you a question this morning. And we often do that to open up the message. Um, we talk about this particular topic quite often, but what does it mean to have faith? When you say you have faith in something, what, what, what does that mean about having faith in something or someone? Let's just think about that for just a few seconds. Having faith, what is that to you? Well, the dictionary, and I'm giving you the brief definition of faith, Faith is a confident belief in the truth, value, or trustworthiness of a person, idea, or thing. It is a belief that does not rest on logical proof of material evidence. So, in other words, I don't have to see it or touch it to believe in it. I don't need that kind of proof. I can still have faith in something without seeing it or touching it. You know, something tangible. If you would, get your Bible or the Pew Bible and turn to the book of Luke, or you can just sit back and listen as I read some verses this morning. From Luke chapter 8. And the story we're going to be looking at in Luke chapter 8 is also found in Matthew chapter 8. And sometime back, a few weeks ago, we mentioned that Matthew chapter 8 is sometimes referred to as the chapter of miracles because there are so many miracles 
in that chapter 8 in the book of Matthew. So we're going to read just a little in the book of Luke. Now Luke, just a little information about Luke that wrote the book of Luke. Luke didn't know Jesus personally. Luke did not know him. Luke became a follower of Jesus after his death. And Luke, most of you know, his occupation was physician, he's a doctor. But he left that profession of being a physician in order to learn from the Apostle Paul and then also travel with the Apostle Paul. So just a brief background on Luke. Physician, left the position, that's going to learn and travel with the Apostle Paul. Now, Luke also talked with many of the disciples, and he talked with others who were followers of Jesus, who were eyewitnesses to the life of Jesus. So Luke has a solid foundation. So in reading the book of Luke, we know where his information comes from. First hand accounts of people that witnessed these things by Jesus. So I'm going to read verse 22 from Luke chapter 8. Now maybe this uh, story we're going to read about is uh, appropriate for what's been going on the last few days because as we get into it, you'll see what story this is. One day, Jesus said to his disciples, Let's go over to the other side of the lake. So they got into a boat and set out. So I'm just going to stop right there with that verse. And notice the words, they got into a boat and set out. Now we've read those words countless times, haven't we? You know, you guys know this story by heart. But have you ever really thought about just those few words that we just read? Because what they tell us is that whenever Jesus tells us to do something, as he did the disciples in saying, let's go to the other side of the lake, we know that when Jesus tells us to do something, Jesus is going to be there with us while we're doing it. We can call upon him at any time. He's with us just like he was in this boat with the disciples. So when they got into a boat and set out, he's with them physically, and we know that Jesus can be with us through our faith, don't we? As we opened up, we're talking about faith. When Jesus said to his disciples, let's go over to the other side of the lake, they really didn't have anything to fear because Jesus is with them. Because no matter what we go through, we don't have to fear it if Jesus is with us. So they had no reason to question Jesus when he said, hey, let's, let's get in the boat and head out here and go to the other side of the lake. You know, the weather was good. The lake was quiet. It was calm. And so the disciples simply followed what Jesus told them to do. And they pushed the boat out into the water. Now Jesus had been teaching and preaching all that day. And so by this time, you know, the human side of Jesus was tired. He needed a rest because he was both <clears throat> man and Savior, wasn't he? He was man and divine. But his man side, his human side, demanded that he needed a little rest, as we all do, right? We can't just stay up continuously. We need some rest. So he's tired. So what does he do? He decides to take a little nap. And we'll read on here in just a bit. But the Sea of Galilee, as we've talked about before, is known for these violent storms that can come up seemingly out of nowhere. They, they're just there. All of a sudden, the, the clouds roll in, the storm starts, thunder, lightning. Now, the reason is that the Sea of Galilee is some 600 feet below sea level. So picture that. It's 600 feet below sea level, it's surrounded by mountains. 
And there are deep ravines from these mountains that run down into the lake. And these ravines act like funnels. What happens is they draw down the cold wind from the mountains. They draw those down. And so therefore, we have these storms that will come up. The creation of these storms. Now, we also know that these men in the boat, some of them were very skilled fishermen, weren't they? They knew how to handle a boat. They've been out on the Sea of Galilee countless times. But they thought this storm was going to be something different. They'd encountered storms out there before. They were used to bad weather. But let's read on here with verse 23, 24, and 25. As they sailed, Jesus fell asleep. A squall came down on the lake so that the boat was being swamped and they were in great danger. The disciples went and woke him saying, Master, Master, we're going to drown. Jesus got up, rebuked the wind and the raging waters. The storm subsided and all was calm. But Jesus asked his disciples this question. Where is your faith? Where is your faith? Now there are times when Jesus might ask us the very same thing. You know, these stories are in the Bible for a reason, aren't they? They're good stories. Sometimes they're very adventurous, just like this one. Storm comes up. And we just read a few verses of this, but you can picture all this happening. But we forget, just like the disciples forgot, that Jesus is with us at all times. We should never lose our, our faith. Jesus was right there in the boat with them. But the disciples did something that all of us can do. They knew who to call. They called out for Jesus, didn't they? Master, Master, just like we can call out. Jesus is never too busy. He's never out of earshot. He can hear us just like he hears those disciples in this story. And he heard them even when he was sleeping, even when he was napping. They, they woke him up. And the same thing happens for us. We might think that Jesus is slumbering. He's taking a little nap somewhere. But even if he is... He's going to wake up when he hears you call. A call does not go unanswered by Jesus. And we just read in verse 25, the disciples asked them, who is this? So they still hadn't really bought into it, had they? Who is this? You know, this, this person that can, that can calm the storm, rebuke the waves, Stop the winds from blowing. Who is this? The power that he has. And we can't even imagine the power that Jesus has without these stories, can we? But we don't have to ask, as the disciples did, who is this? We know who he is. We have the benefit of some 2,000 years of knowledge that has been compiled about, about Jesus. Jesus. We have the Bible in front of us to read about Jesus. We know who he is. They did not. So sometimes you have to put yourselves in, in that position of the disciples before we get, uh, sometimes we think, well, what's wrong with these guys? Well, put yourself there. When Jesus came to this world, and he's telling you who he is. So many people did not believe him. Why would you? Why would you believe Jesus? The disciples did, many others. We believe, but once again, we have the benefit of this knowledge. We know who he is. Jesus, we don't have to ask the question. Jesus is our Lord and our Savior. And once again, I, I love to, to point out these pictures that are on the wall on either side of us. You know, that very human Jesus that's doing some woodworking, he's over here, he's attending to some earthly things. 
We can all picture that, can't we? And then over here is our Savior, the divine Jesus, carrying His cross to be the Savior of the world. I love this. Just as a reminder. He's our Lord and Savior, and we've accepted Him by something we began talking about and have continued to talk about. We accept Him through our faith, don't we? We can't see Jesus. We might see illustrations or what people might think Jesus looked at or looked like, but we can't physically touch Him, can we? And so many people, if they can't physically touch something or believe in it through an equation or through science, they don't believe it. I'm not condemning that person. They just need a little bit more evidence. But that evidence is really never going to come, is it? They, that plus, plus, plus is never going to equal who Jesus says He is. You have to do that through faith. Something unseen. We have to accept Him through faith. We accept His love, don't we? We know that Jesus loves us. So we accept Him also then by faith. We believe that our destiny lies with Him. Our destiny, our eternal destiny. We've placed our confidence in Him. Our hope in God, in a Creator that formed and is in control of this universe. And more and more scientific studies, if you call them that, and I am a follower of science, and I think most of you here are, more and more things are coming together that points to something beyond what we are in this world. Who created all that? God created all that. We are part of the universe. We're part of His creation. And when we talk about love, we know that God loves us so much that what did He do? We read it in John 3.16 quite often, don't we? That He gave His one and only Son, Jesus, to be a sacrifice. And for those that believe in Him through faith, you will have everlasting life in this unfolding universe. So true faith does not involve just the visible, just the touchable. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1, faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. Being certain of what we hope for, that confidence, that being the hope, the confidence, the confidence that we are sure of. And we're certain of that through things that we do not see. And from the book of Corinthians, chapter 5, verse 7, it says, we live by faith, not by sight. You all know that verse. We live by faith. So, whatever storm it is that you might be in right now, continue to call out for Jesus. You know He's there. He'll be with you. Sometimes it doesn't always turn out the way we want it to turn out. But God's plan is so much greater than we can imagine. We, don't, we can't think as God thinks. It transcends all of our understanding, as the Bible says. We can't encompass all of that. But always remember that right in the middle of the storm is Jesus. He is with us always. We're going to have an invitation hymn today. and Maybe you haven't placed your faith in Jesus. And today is the day that you want to do that. And there is no better day than today. If you will, let's turn to hymn number 189. It's called Hallelujah. And please stand with me.
Somebody, thank you. We appreciate what you're doing. All those that serve us. And we know, we say it quite often, that love is not love until we give it away. Well, our closing hymn this morning will be number 704, God Will Make a Way. <clears throat> Before we sing that song, though, join me in a closing prayer today. Jesus, we thank you for the wonderful words that Roger brought today. What a place to be, to worship you and to be together in fellowship. Give us the guidance today and the wisdom and the strength to do your will as we depart this beautiful little church. In his name we all pray. Amen. Amen.